Well, hey, look who's back, and we never left either. It's NEAS, the weekly precap. Enough of that recap bullshit. We're giving you the clips before they even happen. I'm host number one, main man Chris, and I'm joined by host number two. We fucking, we did, we we rehearsed that like 25 times. Uh, anyways, uh, Baby I'm, boy Ben. And there's two of us now, but by the end of it, there'll only be one. That's right. It's a competition season. We're competing to be the one and only host of NEAS. Will it be me, main man Chris, the man with the charisma, the man who's been here from the start, the man with the plan, or will it be... Ben. And we have a wonderful episode for you this week, folks, as the prank stars called Rudy Giuliani plus... Porno Pat interviews a bishop, and we've got calls from Daryl Craft and the Tailgater. First, though, I always wondered if we could fool somebody twice into coming onto our fake show. Was there anybody stupid enough to fall for it twice? Well, the answer is yes, and that person is Laura Loomer. Check it out. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, back. Um, of course, Sam Guy. Uh, today we are joined by Laura Loomer. She is running for a congressional seat in Florida. She obviously has a high profile nationally. Uh, we are going to get into that a little bit, but we're mostly going to talk about her uh, campaign locally for a congressional seat here in Florida. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Laura. Thanks for having me. Now, I have a question for you off the bat. Um, do you Do you feel like nowadays with the sort of push against establishment politics do you think it's led to uh, candidates politicians being less politically savvy uh, and do you think that's a good or a bad thing with regards to new candidates or incumbents being less polit politically savvy who are you talking about i would say new candidates m mainly um uh, just with the definition of political savvy I mean, that is true. It's, I suppose it's like, well, you you have savvy in this old school style of politicking that doesn't really exist anymore. Right. Do you think that um, that political candidates nowadays are a little bit guilty maybe or uh, of making the same mistake over and over again and not learning from their mistakes? Um, do you think that that is an issue? Well, again, you'd have to be really specific with what you're talking about with regards to a mistake. I, I could give you a s specific example. So, like, for example, like a candidate who gets tricked into going on a fake show and gets sort of made fun of a little bit, and then a year later gets contacted by the same guy uh, just wearing a slightly different costume and manages to trick her into coming onto a fake show once again, what would you have to say about that and the fact that nobody really actually wants to interview you for real and then i just fooled you again i wouldn't really consider it being fooled i'd say that i'm actually very transparent it doesn't matter whether you're a troll or whether you're a legitimate journalist or an activist or this is just a prank show i'm willing to answer any question this is really boring stuff all right i'm gonna end it now see you later laura thanks question for you ben what do you know about rudy giuliani uh he's pretty old yeah he is and he also hosts a radio show in new york a show we've called numerous times but one thing that's never happened is he's never taken calls with a guest on well this week he did and the prank stars got a couple of calls through check it out <laughs> So let's go to um, let's go to Eric. Rudy, hello. Eric, hello. Eric, I'm good. I'm fine, Eric. Yeah, um, you know, long story short, I'm a security expert and a former law enforcement officer, and I just wanted to go over a few ideas I have for making schools safer. Please. Uh, first of all. All the adults in the school should be armed, but they need to be trained properly. Also, all teachers should be replaced by active duty police officers. The school itself should be a military barracks and tactical units should be a heating vents ready to deploy at any time. Also, the kids Every should school, you want, wait, 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 wait. should be cops. 
I, I think we're going to cut you off. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. Because of- I, I don't think I've ever cut anybody off before. Let's go to Chris, who is in Canada, I believe. That's right. Uh, thanks for taking my call, uh, Rudy. And I just want to say hello to Scott as well. Hi, Chris. Um, How are you, Chris? What's a, what, what? A question for you, Scott. Um, <laughs> what did Chris ask Rudy's guest, Scott? On a day like today, where we're talking about something like that, you want to, you want to talk about that kind of nonsense, huh? I'm not even going to dignify it with an explanation. <laughs> wonderful person, wonderful relationship. The facts you have completely are screwed up, but I'm not going to correct them. Tailgater loves to drink alcohol, just like you. You're an alcohol fan, right? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, well, sometimes. Uh, yeah, sometimes. The only days that, of the week that end in Y. Anyways, Tailgater loves drinking. He loves sports a little bit as well. And this week, he called into a show where they had a bar stool guy on, and he had some questions for him, but mostly he wanted to tell a story on topic. Check it out. <laughs> One more? You want? Uh, you choose, Mincy. Well, let's go with the Florida guy. Yeah, you Florida see, Southern guy. Go ahead. Hey, Mincy, thanks for picking me, man. I love you so much. Um, I was wondering, is is Dave really? Is he actually really short? I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. He's five. He's my height. I'm five ten and a half. He's about my height. He's really? About five. Really? Yeah, I heard he's, I heard he's five five. That's nah, weird. he's know. about my height. Maybe a maybe a half inch shorter. He's not. He's not that short. Uh, I just I, wanted to tell a quick uh, funny story. My name's Gator. They call me the Tail Gator. I want to tell a funny, quick little story about getting thrown out of uh, going to watch a Gators game, actually, with my girlfriend. So I'm drinking beforehand, right? I'm pounding them back a little bit, a little pre-drink, uh, getting a little nice and loose. I get into the stadium, and I'm, I'm pounding drink. She's saying, you know, you got to knock it off, Gator. You're you're getting – you know, when you get this way, it's really hard to deal with you, and it's not fun. And I said, hey, uh, put a sock in it. And I'm, now I'm hitting the flask. I'm nailing the flask, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm getting blacked out. I'm puking everywhere. He's saying, please stop. You know, why do you do this? What's wrong with you? Why are you drinking this way? And then the security comes and they throw me out. And she's like, uh, she's like, oh, Gator, you're, it's a nightmare to be with you. You you have such an alcohol problem. And I, and I got kicked out. So anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Again. All right. Okay, you go now. You're, you're, you have to do the intro. Go. Sometimes we do fake shows, and uh, this one, Porno Pat interviews a bishop, and he's also, and when the, and the bishop's also a candidate. Oh yeah. Okay. Sometimes we do fake shows, and on this one, Porno Pat interviews a bishop, and the bishop is also a candidate. I'm gonna leave all of that in. Check it out. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, Welcome to Adults Only Politics. I'm your host, as always, Pat Palmer. Uh, Here we talk about politics. Uh, We talk about politics in an adult way. This is not a show for children. And today I'm joined by a congressional candidate in Virginia. He's also a bishop, uh, a man of God, and his name is Bishop Leon Benjamin. Leon, thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you so much, Pat. God bless you. Uh, A lot of great, exciting things are happening across the board, I'm sure. And you guys are tapping into the heartbeat of everything that's going on. So God bless you and appreciate what you're doing out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. The heartbeat has been the heart heartbeat has been tapped. You got that yummy, 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 yummy. One of the big issues that I see as a country, and I think as um, um, is basically internet pornography smut um things like that that are 
basically overtaking our society. Uh, you go online to do ba just any kind of normal work and you're inundated with all of this pornography. The amount of categories that we're dealing with, it's like they got categories for everything now, you know, BBW, you know, gangbang porn, anal porn, you know, big cock stuff, bukake, cum shot, deep throat. Uh, fisting, foot jobs, uh, come in mouth, big tits, uh, glory hole, hentai, solo female, solo male, massage, mature, puffy nipple porn, rimming, spanking, uh, panty porn, milking or lactation porn, where guys are actually like sucking milk out of, like a grown man will be sucking milk out of a, a, a lady's, a pregnant lady's nipple, and people will be liking that. There's titty fucking, wet pussy, uh, webcam, uh, stepbrother, stepsister fantasy uh, pornography. You're just straight up solo orgasm porn. Uh, so, what do you think about all those categories? I, I think what's going on, Pat, and, and you probably might know better this better than myself, is that people have to choose. People are. And how do you choose? To... How do you choose when there's so many categories? Well, how do you choose which one is going to be the one that really you're going to go people, with? Because it's like, I'm here I am. People, I'm, I'm, no, sorry. Hang in, on. Sorry. One second. Are... I was on kind of a, I was starting to feel it a little bit there. Yeah, I'm just saying what, what's going on is that that the, the marketplace uh you know people are now having to to, to just cut it off uh but we well, i've never seen crazy. anything like that leon i've never seen any pornos where anything's here. getting getting cut off and what's what's happening is is that there's a lot of people out here who have given in uh uh, but how do you, but how do you avoid in. how do you avoid giving right, in? Let me, let me ask you a question. Okay. I mean, you're not doing none of those things, right? Not doing you're any. You're against all of those things, right? You're against all of those. Everything you just named, you're against it, right? Uh, gotta go. <laughs> you know Daryl Kraft, right? You've met him before. Uh, yeah. What's the way you would describe? He's not really. What? How would you describe him? Uh, I think he's cool. Okay. Um, he's an interesting stand-up comedian, and this week he happened upon a real comedian who is giving out advice over the internet, a really sweet green host who encountered the dastardly Daryl Craft. Check it out. Woo! Oh my gosh, look at the waiting room. All right, coming up next. We got Daryl. What's goody, Daryl? Hey, oh, just want to be in the right position here, make sure I'm centered. Look hey. at that backdrop. Oh, snap. We in here. Oh, yeah. I'm in this. I'm in the. It's not mine. Fellow stand up comedian. It's always cool to chop it up. And I've been at the, at, in the game for a long time and uh, worked, you know, all over the place, done all kinds of things. And. Nice. Basically, I'm a, yeah, I'm a really strong uh, touring level comedian. Uh, boo, got a fall, 45 solid minutes easy, and um, boo, 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 got a fall, 45 solid minutes easy, and um, what I want, um, what I want to talk about is like, man, what's, what's up with like, we can't get booked anymore with like, <laughs> <laughs> with like well, what? Sorry, like getting booked in general? I didn't mean to laugh, but yeah, getting booked is definitely a, hey, a hurdle buddy, for all I'm, of us. <laughs> I'm a freaking, I'm a stand-up. I'm never turning down a laugh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, hey, I'll take them. I don't know why you're laughing, but it's, sometimes I leave my shows at the end and people are laughing in the places where it's like, where it wasn't necessarily meant to be the funny parts at <laughs> all. And the, the punchline kind of stuff is falling very flat but some of the other stuff is really hitting hard and i'm i'm flabbergasted but I, i'll take it <laughs> um but i mean as far as like obviously you understand there's a huge problem with what we're allowed to say on stage anymore we can't basically say anything well it depends on where you're getting booked and what the well, audience and, is. and, they, and you're not yeah <laughs> and i'm saying i thought it was an open mic that's actually kind of the whole concept of it the whole concept of it is People sh show up, sign up, go up, and they're saying, "Not you can't, not this, not this week, not again. We're not doing this again, sir." You know. Oh, that's happened to you. 
don't don't call me. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh-huh. I think it's happened to a lot of us. Um, but yes, it's happened to me. And and they say, sir, we're not doing this. First off, who are you calling, sir? You know, no. I'm not, I've uh, last time I checked, I wasn't. Uh, I've never been. Um, what would I say? What would be the best uh, kind of next thing? Next last thing I, six thing, last thing I said I I uh, or last time I checked I'm, I'm not knighted by the Queen of England. So so, a thing you can do is like produce your own shows. You know. Yes, and that's a hard thing too because it's like they'll do venue bands. Are you familiar with venue bands? <laughs> But I was wondering if I can, I don't want to take up too much time because there's people waiting and some of the other callers before it took up too much time. Not to be... <laughs> Again, I don't, I don't know why you're laughing, but I'm going to take it. I love it. I love I'm crushing this call hard. Uh, I'm crushing. But I wanted to just do a quick joke for you. Yeah. Um, show you some of that Florida flavor. Where are you based on? Uh, I'm in Atlanta. Okay, cool. I could... I'm not that far away. I could get over there, maybe potentially, and um, <clears throat> try to do some try to do some stuff. Uh, There's a lot of stuff. shows up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to do a lot of a lot of them. Uh, you, I'd love to do the shows and have you vouch for me for sure. Okay, here's the here's the joke. Here we go. <laughs> so I go. I uh, hey, summertime's coming around the corner. I guess so you it's just safe to say that. So I'm I'm going down to get myself some suntan lotion. Uh, obviously, I'm at the department store. And uh, I show up there and I say, uh, which way is the, uh, which way is the, the uh, uh, suntan lotion if I'm looking to, to get that for the summertime? And the guy looks at me and he says, oh, hello, I'm a Hall of Famer. Um, I'm a Hall of Fame catcher, Mike Piazza. I'm saying, oh, okay, hey, pizza man. From the, yeah, yeah, I remember. Very cool. I said, do you know where the suntan lotion is? He said, I think you might be dreaming. I said, if I'm dreaming, then why have I defecated? And why is it all going down my leg? And everybody's looking at me. And I don't think you can smell stuff so clearly and when you're dreaming, Mr. Piazza. And then Mr. Piazza said, I'm actually Betty White. Um, okay. I'm really sorry. You seem really nice. I'm really sorry that I. (laughs) We just got demonetized, but it's all good. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, he just bailed. Yo, man, let's get out of here. All right, everyone. That's the end of our first episode, but not the end of the clips for the week. That's right. Go over to patreon.com slash not even a show, and you can check out a show that already happened before the pre, and here's some fucking clips from it. Hey, it's Roy Terry. I was wondering if you want to fist fight about technology. Yeah, you know what? I heard a little bit. It's Roy. Roy, it's Ed. How are you? Good to hear from you. But Go ahead. Just repeat your question there. What are you smoking on, uh, on my burn? Uh, it's He's a mix not. of He's some purple, lungs. purple punch and orange sherbet grinded oh, it together. That's weird. You, this this guy, is all I got left, man. This guy over here, I'm a burn decided, oh, I love smoking weed, but I don't want to smoke the green. <laughs> I don't want, I only want to smoke the purple and the orange. <laughs> I'm down with the colorful ones. Yeah. Good yeah, I like that. it too, yeah. I just want to fit in. <laughs> All right, so now you've seen that, and now you probably have to go over and subscribe. <laughs> I mean, you have to. Uh, anyways, uh, Ben, it's going to be quite a competition, I would imagine, between you and I. I wonder what you think is your strongest characteristic that's going to help you in this competition. My quick wit.